am Judge Anne-Marie Jolly. I have the honor to be the administrative judge of the New York City Family Court, a court that addresses nearly 200,000 case filings each year, serving an estimated 500 to 600,000 New Yorkers. Thousands of families come to New York City Family Court every day, usually because they're experiencing a trauma. And it's our job to help them navigate through that trauma and get to the other side. It's important to show them that they are more than the worst thing that has ever happened to them. So please join us as we share our experiences with New York City Family Court across the counties and across all titles. I'm Eugene Hurley, and I'm the Chief Clerk of New York City Family Court, the place where I've spent most of my court career. As Chief Clerk, my top priorities go to the heart of our mission statement, to protect the rights of families and children by ensuring the just and timely resolution of all matters brought before the court while remaining committed to ensuring that all who serve in our court and all who interface with our court are treated with respect and dignity. My father was a family court sergeant in Queens Family Court growing up. Um, I started my career in Brooklyn Family Court and now um, I'm a supervisor in Richmond Family Court. So Family Court's kind of been in my family for um, throughout my life. Um, one thing that I personally take pride in is helping the public. Well, New York Family Court is a part of the judicial uh, branch, which deals with uh, specifically three kind of specialties. We have the CVOG specialty, custody, visitation, orders of protection, and guardianship. We have the child support unit that obviously is with the name is for uh, child support and also paternity. And we have the child protective specialty that is where we deal with neglect, neglect and abuse, adoption, uh, and many others like treatment court and all of that uh, involved, especially juvenile delinquency. Family court to me is somewhere that people go when there is something that requires the government to intervene with in the family, which is I think the most private and personal thing that having an outsider intrude on can be. And it's something that I've been thinking a lot about since law school even, where what gives the government the right to interfere with a very personal matter, the family matter, but you know, the the state, the courts, all the agencies that we see, all the people that we see, always have an interest in making sure families and, and children are safe and happy and healthy. And so family court is where the government steps in and tries to make sure that that happens. I would say first and foremost, it is about the child. The child is the root, is the heart of everything that comes out of this building. The one thing that I've seen that really has come to fruition is the ability for people to actually come in and get something done. They don't have to wait online for five hours to, just to be heard and then be told it's too late, um, we have to turn you away. Um, the access to technology and them being able to achieve some sort of solution to their problems, even from the comfort of their home, I think it gives them a much better ease to not being scared of the court system. And the fact that the language has improved as far as dealing with um, people of different cultures and um, just the overall consensus of the officers and the court personnel. Um, it's just become a more people-friendly place. 
it's unfortunate that people do come in with the idea that there's no hope. And I think we do, are beginning to do at least, a much better job at dissipating that notion as we go along so that people do feel engaged enough. Family Corps is always thinking of a new way to helping people, litigants or you know all the public out there. Um, our, again, our, the design of our course is a little different than just regular Supreme Court or Civil Court. Like people have to go there, pay a filing fee, and it's different type of practice. So we always try to look for new technology, new way to help people, and you know, benefit people in many ways. A case I had a few years back. And it was a contempt proceeding, actually, and the non-custodial parent, he owed a considerable amount of money. We had a trial. Uh, the end result of the trial was he ended up paying pretty much everything he owed, which, not unusual, I've done many cases with the same type of fact pattern, the same result, but this case kind of stuck out in my mind because a few months later was the Christmas season. It was the end of the year, and there was a um, Christmas card that was mailed to the courthouse to me from the custodial parent. And she thanked me for enforcing the order, and the kids were a little older, and she said that this would be the first Christmas that she could ever really give them a real Christmas and give them what they wanted. And uh, it just, it was a good reminder that what we do actually matters in people's lives. So I always felt that that was something that was great about family court, that we take people who come and maybe don't know how to navigate or don't know what's going on or what's gonna happen or f are afraid. And you give them a little sense of, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna help you through this, and we'll get to the other side. There's so many great things about working in family court, uh, and so many great stories that I'm sure you're, you're all gonna hear. Um, what I wanna talk about is uh, the Honorable Judge Jane, Jane Boland. Uh, she served here in family court. Uh, before there was Katanji Brown Jackson or Julia Cooper Mack or Constance Baker Motley, uh, before any of uh, those uh, judges blazed their trail, the very first black female judge in any court anywhere in the United States uh, was Judge Jane Bolin, and she sat right here in family court. She was appointed in 1939 and served almost 40 years until 1978 uh, when she was of uh, mandatory retirement age. We love doing this work here in family court. There are days, obviously, where things are hectic, where things are difficult. Um, I think of her often on a difficult day. I say, if Judge Boland, uh, being the first uh, to blaze the trail that she blazed, was able to do the work that she did and set the example that she set, certainly I can get through my day um, uh, and get through my caseload and help the families that are in front of me, uh, give them the time that they deserve and the attention that they deserve. The court is a very different place than it was 50 years ago, thank goodness, and uh, we've come a long way. And I have been very, very fortunate in my professional career, and I've had a rewarding, challenging, and very exciting professional life. Um, and we have much work to do. Um, we have much work to um, make the court more equitable, to fight racism, to increase our resources, and to ensure justice, and to make the court more responsive to the needs of the children and the families who come before it. When I started in the Bronx as an assistant deputy chief clerk, I was assigned to the CVO division and I was often asked to step in at the window when we had angry litigants. I can recall a few times um, when the same gentleman came in very upset, uh, requesting visitation with his twin daughters. One day, it was Christmas Eve, so I pulled him aside and I let him share. I said, you know, what happened? He's like, I just want to see my girls. I just want to see my girls. I see right here, you're supposed to have a visit right now. 
Is there any reason why you came to family court to request visitation? You're missing a visit. Go see your girls right now and come back to me the day after Christmas. I promise we'll file your paperwork. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do that. I said, great, go prepare your girls for Santa and I'll see you the day after Christmas. And he did come back and he actually thanked us for, for listening, but also for telling him to go see his girls because he would have missed the entire visit had we filled out his paperwork and had him appear before a judge that day. It just brings to mind how compassion has to come first. And it takes a community to do this. And in family court, our hearts are community sized. I am also sure that the hundreds of attorneys for children and lawyers representing parents in the family court can claim the same satisfaction derived from using their skills to help other individuals with the most fundamental issues in their lives. We are a unique and special court. My career, of course, continued for many years in family court, and I have seen changes along the way. But the original creation of a separate body of family law and a new family court 60 years ago in recognition of the individual rights of children, individuals, parents, and families has not changed. In our work each day, we strive to live up to these ideals by while appreciating and supporting the unique needs and challenges of children and families sometimes in crisis, we also respect their fundamental right to due process. We are proud to serve our fellow New Yorkers. Because of our determination to ensure that our court is accessible to the families we serve and responsive to their legal needs, we are determined to identify and address issues that may negatively impact and affect the experience of those who appear in our court. I remain committed as the administrative judge of the New York City Family Court to ensuring that as we do our work, we do so with respect and dignity.